Welcome back to the ICU curriculum. Let's talk about anion gap metabolic acidosis and lactic acidosis. In this session, we will compare and contrast the mud piles and gold mark mnemonics for remembering etiologies of anion gap metabolic acidosis, review the basic biochemistry of lactate production and metabolism, and construct a differential diagnosis for type A and type B lactic acidosis. Let's start by talking about anion gap metabolic acidosis. If you have identified a metabolic acidosis in your patient, the next step is to calculate whether an anion gap is present. The anion gap is calculated by taking sodium, a cation, meaning it's positively charged, and subtracting the major anions, meaning negatively charged, chloride and bicarbonate. An abnormal anion gap is generally greater than or equal to 12. However, the abnormal anion gap values are lab-dependent and vary from hospital to hospital. It is best to check with your specific lab regarding normal and abnormal values. If the anion gap is elevated, we can use one of two mnemonics to identify the etiology. The first and most common is mud piles. Methanol, uremia, DKA, peraldehyde, iron or isoniazid, lactic acidosis, ethylene glycol, and salicylates. While this mnemonic is certainly helpful, a few of its components, namely peraldehyde, iron, and isoniazid, are now rarer causes of metabolic acidosis. Therefore, a new mnemonic was proposed in The Lancet in 2008. Goldmark. Glycols, ethylene glycol, antifreeze, and propylene glycol, which is used as a solvent in some IV medications, including IV lorazepam. 5-oxoproline, also known as pyroglutamic acid. 5-oxoproline is an amino acid that accumulates with chronic acetaminophen use in malnourished patients, especially women. L-lactate, the significantly more abundant and clinically significant isomer. D-lactate, the less common isomer, produced when bacteria in the colon are exposed to large amounts of unabsorbed carbohydrates, like in cases of short bowel syndrome, methanol, aspirin, renal failure, and ketoacidosis, including diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, alcoholic ketoacidosis, aka, and starvation ketoacidosis. How do we use the Goldmark mnemonic to work up an undifferentiated anion gap metabolic acidosis? We can check for the presence of glycols by testing for the presence of toxic alcohols in the blood. While we cannot check for 5-oxoproline directly, we can check an acetaminophen level in the right clinical context. For example, patients reporting consistent acetaminophen usage. In cases of anion gap metabolic acidosis due to 5-oxoproline accumulation, the acetaminophen level will often be in the therapeutic range or low. To check for L-lactate, again, the significantly more common isomer, we can check a lactate level. There is no readily available clinical lab test to assess for D-lactate. Therefore, this diagnosis is based on history and ruling out other more common causes. Again, we can check our toxic alcohols to assess for methanol. We can check a salicylate level to assess for aspirin toxicity. A basic metabolic panel evaluates for the presence of renal failure. And finally, a serum beta-hydroxybutyrate will assess for ketoacidosis. Now, let's talk in more detail about lactate and lactic acidosis. First, a review of biochemistry. On our chalkboard, we have the liver, skeletal muscle, and mitochondria. Glucose produced in the liver via gluconeogenesis or glycogenolysis is transported to the skeletal muscles and tissues of the body to use as energy. Next, glycolysis occurs. Glycolysis results in the production of pyruvate. Pyruvate has two possible fates. Under aerobic conditions, meaning oxygen is present, pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA in the mitochondria. The pyruvate dehydrogenase complex facilitates this conversion. Notably, thiamine is a cofactor of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Acetyl-CoA ultimately enters the tricarboxylic acid or TCA cycle. Under anaerobic conditions, pyruvate is converted to lactate via the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase, LDH. NADH is oxidized to NAD during this reaction. Lactate produced in the skeletal muscles and organs is then transported via the blood back to the liver. Once in the liver, gluconeogenesis occurs, and lactate is converted to pyruvate, which is then converted back into glucose. This process is called the Cori cycle. Now that we have reviewed some basic lactate biochemistry, let's create a framework and differential diagnosis for lactic acidosis. There are two types of lactic acidosis, type A due to hypoperfusion or cellular hypoxia, and type B, which occurs in the setting of normal perfusion. 
A common cause of type A lactic acidosis is shock. From a prior session, our shock differential includes sepsis, hypovolemia or hemorrhage, obstructive causes, cardiogenic, and combos of any of the above. In addition, local or regional tissue ischemia causes a type A lactic acidosis. Examples of tissue ischemia include mesenteric ischemia, acute limb ischemia, and compartment syndrome. Finally, seizure causes a type A lactic acidosis due to significantly increased anaerobic muscle activity. This is like the lactic acidosis from intense exercise, rigors, or shivering. A hint to seizure as the cause of lactic acidosis is the rapid clearance of the lactic acidosis once seizure activity has stopped. Type B lactic acidosis, lactic acidosis in the setting of normal perfusion, can be broken down into three categories. Metabolic, decreased clearance, and drugs. We will use our biochemistry chalkboard to diagram the why for each etiology we discuss. First, metabolic causes. Thiamine deficiency, beriberi, causes lactic acidosis. Referring to our biochemistry chalkboard, without thiamine as a cofactor, pyruvate dehydrogenase cannot convert pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, shunting pyruvate to lactate. Next, alcohol use. Alcohol is metabolized to acetaldehyde and then to acetate. The two enzymes involved are alcohol dehydrogenase and aldehyde dehydrogenase, both of which reduce NAD plus to NADH. An increased ratio of NADH to NAD plus favors the conversion of pyruvate to lactate. Next, the Warburg effect. The Warburg effect describes the process whereby cancer cells preferentially produce energy through anaerobic glycolysis even in aerobic conditions. The Warburg effect is most common in leukemia, lymphoma, and other large solid malignancies. DKA can cause a mild type B lactic acidosis due to abnormal utilization of glucose. Finally, any disease that causes mitochondrial dysfunction will shunt pyruvate to lactate. Next, problems of decreased lactate clearance. The liver metabolizes or clears approximately 70% of lactate via the Cori cycle. Therefore, liver failure and cirrhosis can cause a type B lactic acidosis. Essentially, if you knock out the liver, the Cori cycle cannot occur and lactate cannot be metabolized. Renal failure can also cause a type B lactic acidosis via decreased clearance. We did not discuss this in our brief biochemistry review, but the kidney is responsible for 10 to 20% of lactate metabolism. Therefore, renal failure could cause a mild lactic acidosis but a healthy and functioning liver should be able to compensate. Finally, multiple drugs can cause a type B lactic acidosis. Notable medications include metformin, parenteral beta agonists like epinephrine, as well as inhaled beta agonists to a lesser degree like albuterol, propofol, antiretroviral therapy, namely the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor class, linazolid, and nitroprusside via cyanide toxicity. Except for beta agonists, which increase glycolysis, the remainder of these medications cause lactic acidosis by directly impairing mitochondrial function. Let's zoom back out and take one last look at our approach to anion gap metabolic acidosis and lactic acidosis. In this session, we compared and contrasted the mud piles and goldmark mnemonics for remembering etiologies of anion gap metabolic acidosis, reviewed the basic biochemistry of lactate production and metabolism, and constructed a differential diagnosis for type A and type B lactic acidosis. Thank you for your participation.